What's up, everybody? It's Bear, founder and CEO of RefugeMedical.com and president of Grindstone Ministries. Today, we're going to talk about 10 prepping tips from the future. What am I talking about, Bear? John Teeter, T-I-T-O-R. Internet sensation, uh, early 2000s or so, alleged time traveler of which I've been aware for quite some time now, a decade and a half or so. Fascinating story. But Bear, do you think it's real? Eh, no, I think it's a hoax. But um, recently, I was watching uh, the YouTube channel Y Files, AJ and Hecklefish, Y, W-H-Y, Files. And they did a piece about uh, John Titer and Something that they said that he said stuck out to me. See that uh, smoke rolling on camera there? That's a diesel. They made some recommendations where they say that John, Mr. Time Traveler Man, made some recommendations about how to survive the coming World War, World War III. And I did a little bit of internet sleuthing and I found those 10 recommendations. They're fascinating. Number one, do not eat or use products from any animal that is fed and eats part of its own dead. Interesting. One could even say Leviticus 11 on that. And we'll, we'll go back through these in a moment. Do not kiss or have intimate relations with anyone you do not know. Wise advice, especially if you have teenagers. Learn basic sanitation and water purification. Be comfortable around firearms. Learn to shoot and clean a gun. (sighs) Item five. Get a good... I'm not making this up. Yes, I own Refuge Medical. Hey, look, a battle dog. Anatolian Pyrenees mix. His name is Sam. He will eat your face. Number five. Get a good first aid kit and learn how to use it. Number six, find five people within 100 miles that you trust with your life and stay in contact with them. Number seven, get a copy of the U.S. Constitution and read it. Number eight, eat less. Number nine, get a bicycle and two sets of spare tires. Ride it 10 miles a week. Number 10, consider what you would bring with you if you had to leave your home in 10 minutes and never return. Fascinating points. Now, Mr. Teeter, John Teeter, who again, I think was a hoax, and you can do your own deep dive on that, Um, but Mr. Teeter's concern, having traveled back from the future in 2036 to receive an, or retrieve an IBM 5100 to deal with some uh, inherent source code issues in legacy software, I think I'm getting all this correct, uh, because of, uh, I think it was Linux, timestamp-based 32-bit issues somewhere around 2038. The computers melt down, similar to our Y2K issue, and then Russia unleashes nuclear holocaust on the United States of America and China, and the end result is half the world's population is dead, most of which, and this is him saying this, not me, most of which are those that reside in these cities, the built-up areas. Hmm, imagine that. Oh, Bear, shut up. I hate it when you say things that I don't like. Um, And allegedly, in his world line, because, you know, he lives in a different, Mr. Teeter lives in a different world line than we do because he's a time traveler. So this is the multi-world theory put forth by multiple people with PhDs, which of course stands for piled higher and deeper. But in his world line, uh, civil unrest starts around 2004, which leads to an American... Uh, second civil war that lasts until about 2015, and then there's a nuclear holocaust in 2038-ish. And so, in the future, where he's from, they're deeply concerned about issues of, um, we'll call it global stewardship. Uh, You know, keeping the earth clean, mad cow disease is a big thing for them, and... uh, 
what's that one? Khrushchev, Jacob's disease or something like that. Anyway, they're very, very concerned about that. They're also, the United States breaks into five different fiefdoms, essentially. Each one is ruled by its own presidency that responds to, is responsible to a much weakened federal national government. And so his advice is in that context, these 10 things. We'll look at the first one. Do not eat or use products from any animal that is fed and eats part of its own dead. These are parasitical cul-de-sacs. If you look at CAFOs, concentrated animal feedlots, um, swine, pork products, uh, commercial grow houses for poultry, turkeys and chickens, right? All of those things eat parts of their own dead. And that's why, or in part why, we've seen a rise in swine fever and swine flu and um, avian flu, etc., wiping out vast populations of those livestock animals, as well as infecting people with all types of various diseases. That stuff's not healthy for you. So, mm, some fixing to get killed. Sound advice. Number two, do not kiss or have intimate relations with anyone you do not know. Sexually transmitted diseases, uh, diseases that are transmitted through bodily fluids. It's part of why in refuge training we teach if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it. Which is why I keep natural gloves in my pocket. Because uh, you're probably going to have to render aid at some point. But if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it. Because you don't know what kind of diseases those people have. And if we're talking about some post-apocalyptic World War III, post-Civil War 2.0 scenario where infrastructure has been greatly degraded. Mm, it's been greatly degraded right now. Charlie Victor 1-9 or anybody. Um, the likelihood of you re receiving adequate treatment for mysterious diseases at La Hospital. Hey! Sam! Is low. La Hospital. Three, learn basic sanitation and water purification. As I was saying, three, learn basic sanitation and water purification. This makes absolute sense right now from a preparedness standpoint. Uh, basic sanitation, foodborne illness, um, waterborne illness, sexually transmitted diseases, diseases that are transmitted in bodily fluids, uh, basic viral and bacterial infections, makes absolute sense. And then water purification, yep, right now. I mean, uh, two words for you. Flint, Michigan. Four, be comfortable around firearms. Learn to shoot and clean a gun. Yup. So basic maintenance, PMCS, and the use of said firearms in a martial or semi-martial context seems very preparation. Good advice. Remember, this advice is uh, roughly 20 years old. Interesting. Five, get a good first aid kit and learn to use it. I'm telling you, I didn't make this video because of that line, but it certainly jumps out to me. Of course, you know your promo code is BearNation at RefugeMedical.com for free shipping on everything. Made in America, guaranteed forever. 55 lives saved to date. And, uh, you know, HSA, FSA eligible. So, check that out. But yeah, you should absolutely have a first aid kit from us or anybody else. Problem is, most other people make crappy first aid kits, but I digress. A good first aid kit and know how to use it. Much like possessing a firearm and not knowing how to use it doesn't help you. Much like possession does not equate to proficiency with anything, including, uh, how about one of these? A chainsaw? You can own a chainsaw. Doesn't mean you know how to run a chainsaw, right? You're in the back of my truck right now, BT dubs. So knowing how to use it is very important. That's why we have refuge training. Learn the fine art of how to not die. Uh, or any other class. Take a basic EMR class, emergency medical responder class. That's 40 hours and it's an introduction to BLS or basic life support. You can build on that with uh, EMT, emergency medical technician, then AEMT, and then paramedic, and then uh, if, you know, if you want to be cool guy, TACP or whatever, right? whatever floats your boat. So you can build those skills as much as you would like to, as, and you should. You join a volunteer fire department and start learning, right? So that makes sense. 
Uh, six, I've, this is a mag, is what he, mutual assistance group. Six, find people within 100 miles that you trust with your life and stay in contact with them. Yeah, for sure. Spider points, waypoints, hidey holes, caches. It's, it's a cache, but you know, C-A-C-H-E. So many people say caches, so pinkies up, boys. Find five people within 100 miles that you trust with your life and stay in contact with them. Mutual assistance groups. For shizzle. Seven, get a copy of the U.S. Constitution and read it. Mm, highly recommended. Why would that be pertinent? Well, because in Mr. Titer's future, most of those uh, God-given constitutionally protected rights have been deeply infringed. And he even says in some of his mysterious online posts that the people of his time, 2036 and thereafter, do not look fondly upon the people of our time because we have abdicated our responsibilities to the lowest bidder. We elected a bunch of people that didn't, weren't good stewards, didn't know what they were doing, but you know, we like NASCAR, so are we voting for the blue team or the red team? Don't matter, right? You should know what the Constitution says so that you know when your rights are being infringed. Yeah, that sounds a little sovereign citizen-ish, but it's a fact. And most of what we have in the law enforcement space, and I, I take nothing away from good con four constitution law enforcement officers. We've trained hundreds of them. We work with dozens of them. But a lot of law enforcement in this country violates your constitutional rights, as does federal law enforcement, as does the legislative branch, as does the executive branch, judicial branch, right? Pick one. They're all violating your constitutional rights, so you should probably know what those are so that you have a firm line in the stand that you can stand on. Number eight, eat less. My guess is nine out of ten of the people watching this right now, myself included, could eat less food and PT more. So, eat less, for sure. Uh, this is important for a couple of reasons, maybe three. The first is your health. We could all stand to eat less and PT more, or the vast majority of us, assuming I'm speaking predominantly to Americans, could stand to eat less. So your health. The next is, um, think about your ability to produce rather than consume, to replace the calories that you're consuming. If you're used to a 4,000 calorie a day diet and you can only produce 2,000 calories a day on your meager suburban third of an acre backyard after the balloon goes up and most of the places in the country have been nuked and you're just eking by in this post-apocalyptic world that the zombies are hoarding up in. Yeah, being accustomed to eating fewer calories would be a good idea. And, uh, Lastly, what about your food storage, right? So it makes sense, eat less. It also makes you hypothetically less dependent upon the, the system, agribusiness. Nine, get a bicycle and two sets of spare tires, ride at 10 miles a week. So there's PT involved here, but this is also transpo. And we've seen uh, with the Charlie Victor 1-9er that uh, your ability to move freely about the battle space has been hindered greatly at some points. And what about the cost of gasoline or the supply chain issues that are making parts nigh impossible to acquire for the repair of certain vehicles? Or what about in California where you can no longer buy a small engine because of emissions? Or what happens when they do away with um, fossil fuel vehicles altogether and everybody's dependent upon EVs, which are catching on fire and we're, you know, let's not talk about it, but we're made with Chinese slave labor, the Uyghurs. Right, so maybe having a bike is a good idea, and two sets of spare tires, that's just the maintenance on the vehicle. That makes absolute sense, plus, like I said, has a PT aspect. And lastly, number 10, consider what you would bring with you if you had to leave your home in 10 minutes and never return. You mean a bug out bag? You mean a bug out system? Bug out locations? Caches? Spider points? <coughs> Pre-positioned loadouts for you to just grab and go? Yeah. That's basic prepper stuff, man. So, these 10 points from Mr. Teeter from the future, wink, uh, I think are all very valid prepper points. And I find it interesting that in a place where I would in no way be looking for validation of my prepper mindset, the Y files, we find these concepts cropping up. I am, of course, interested in your comments down below. Uh, let me know what you think, but... Um, 
I think it's fascinating. And the, this whole John Teeter thing, my opinion is make believe. But who knows? Maybe they're all there are multiple universes and there are people struggling in the future because we lack currently the balls, the self resolve, the spine to do something about the global elites. Or or it's rainbows and unicorns. Y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.